Hi guys, my name is Jason Ballard. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. One year and one week ago, we did not even know if this was possible. My background is originally in conservation biology. Uh, I ended up in building because if you look at the world like a conservation biologist and you say where are all these ecological and human health issues coming from, the surprising answer that none of my professors at university told me is it's coming from buildings. So buildings are the number one user of energy by sector, they're the number two user of water, so sustainability is a problem, affordability is a problem, resiliency, and under one day we can print that house. Cost $10,000. The full build out of that house, as you see it, would be about $35,000 which is still cheaper than my buddy who finished that house could build it for you conventionally. If I printed that house today with the Vulcan II, we could print that house for about $2,500. What? And so that's pretty cool. Then you still have to finish, you gotta put a roof on it and all that kind of stuff. But we are really getting great on price. Our big goal at Icon, it's not gonna help us to be 10% cheaper. What we talk about a lot at Icon is half price housing. We are not there yet. So where are we? We've done a, a cost analysis of this house. So my buddy, Taylor Jackson, who's owns this property and is a, is a professional builder. He was nice enough to share his spreadsheets with us. It looks like right now, we're about 30% cheaper than conventional buildings. We did that exercise again with a 1,500 square foot house that we have not yet built, but that we plan to build this year. And it still looks like on paper, we think we're about 30% cheaper than conventional buildings because we've got to find a way to deliver half price house. Why don't we go take an up close and personal look? That sound fun? Getting the concrete to behave appropriately in the first instance was really hard. Concrete typically does one of two things on the spectrum. Concrete can flow really well. So like the kind of concrete you use in this foundation on the sidewalk, when you pour it, you want it to kind of flow and spread out so that you can level it and there you've got a foundation. We needed this concrete to flow because we've got to push it through pipes and out of an extruder. However, as soon as it comes out of the extruder, we need it to stop flowing. Or you don't have a house, you have a puddle. So we had to get concrete both to flow and then as soon as it comes out of that extruder, stop flowing. And by stop flowing, I mean with precision. If you'll look, you don't have to look very long, but you realize there are blemishes in this print. We call them blemishes. In the last six months, we've reduced blemishes to less than 1%. Second thing we did to improve the concrete was strength. This concrete, it gets measured in something called uh, compressive strength in terms of PSI. First generation concrete had a, uh, was 3,000 PSI. Uh, compared to CMU blocks, which are about 1,500 PSI, compared to lumber, which is about 1,000 PSI. So we're about three times stronger than lumber. In the past year, we've improved the compressive strength to 6,000 PSI. So it's probably too strong, but it actually puts a lot of courage in us that we probably can make this work for multi-story buildings. Like concrete does not do very good in tension. So I talked about compression. It doesn't do very good in tension. And so you would not want to have a concrete roof or the things you would have to do to support a concrete roof means that you should just go ahead and have another kind of roof. We don't print just to show off. We print things if we can do them faster, stronger, and cheaper. And so it's right now the fastest, strongest, cheapest thing to do is print the shell and then do the roof and the windows and the doors kind of conventionally. We have a list of other automations we'd love to add. Two of the big ones would be like foundations. There's no reason we couldn't pour foundation concrete out of the machine, flush it, and then start to the print. There's another thing we think we can automate these wall systems, and that's the MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Right now, the way we do it is we either come to the foundation or the ceiling if we can. If we can't, we follow code for puncturing the envelope of the CMU building. However, one of the cool things about 3D printed buildings is you can control the internal structure. We think the day is coming when we can print the chases and conduit for all the systems in place inside the wall. In fact, we know we can do that. What we don't know yet is how that affects the structural uh, characteristics of the wall system. Right now, when we print this wall, you're getting structure, you're getting thermal envelope, you're getting interior exterior moisture barrier, and you're getting interior exterior finishing surface. So you've automated about four or five trades. That means you've taken the labor cost to zero. Other fun things we have up for to do is a smoothing concrete, like where there's a smoothing apparatus that follows along the extruder and actually smooths the concrete as it prints in case people want that kind of finish. And we're going to start experimenting with colors and dyes. Go inside and look at the house. We have a little show off moment over there with the curve. Like with 3D printing, a curve and a slope is just as easy as a straight plumb line. And I'm really excited for some talented architects to get a hold of that and start um, experimenting with it. And it doesn't cost any more money. It's very, very expensive to do curves and slopes. So the wall could do this. 
I mean, that you can introduce all kinds of organic forms to the construction process that would cost millions of dollars. Think about like an app store for home designs. Like where you like instead of picking out app tree fund, you're picking out houses. You can click into them, you can stretch them, make them a little bigger. That tells you how that changes the cost. You see the price change. You're changing the size of the bedroom and the size of the bathroom. When you like it, it's like, that's the home I want. So like Amazon has free shipping, Icon has free architecture. If we're going to build out of concrete, they need to last a long time. Part of the way you get things to last a long time is you make them beautiful. That's a finish called American Clay. And that's actually a waterproof, because that's why they put it in the bathroom, because it's waterproof. But you could, you, there's no reason you couldn't have done that to the entire house. So like take a house, imagine 3D printing it, it'll be 30% cheaper than conventional. And our goal is half price houses. So eventually, yeah, so this is a, we're a technology company first, really. Right. This is a tool we've developed, and we hope to put this tool in the hands of as many people as possible. However, we are going to have to guard and steward it very well in the early days. So, for instance, you have to use our concrete, not because I'm trying to make more money, because it's the only stuff I know that's safe. You have to use our house designs, not because I'm trying to make money on house designs, I'm going to give them away, because I know they've been validated to be structurally sound. Uh, we may have to really make people, so like, we'll have to really take good care of it to protect both the safety of the people who live in these houses and the brand of 3D printing. So I print a 3D printed house. It is not my company. If a 3D printed house falls over and kills a family, like that, that, that hurts this whole movement. I think this should be the normal way to build. If you're building a one or two story building, this should be the normal way to build. That's what we think.